What's up everybody? Hope you're doing good. I got a video for you today on vocal processing. And actually a couple years ago, I did a video for Warp Academy on more basic vocal processing, especially using plugins that come bundled within Ableton Live. I'll link to that video below so you can use it as a reference. In today's video, however, I'm gonna go into some more intermediate and advanced techniques using third-party plugins, namely FabFilter and Isotope Ones. Vocal processing is a really complex area of music production, so I'm really excited to dive in and show you guys some of my tips and tricks that I've developed over the years. Without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so this session is a song that I mixed a while back for a group called Kempt out of Brooklyn. They're kind of shoegazy rock with a lot of electronic elements, a lot of low end. Let me just play the chorus to give you an idea of how this song sounds. Yeah, cool song. And you probably noticed that there's both a male and a female singer. In this tutorial though, I'm gonna concentrate on the male singer on the track you're seeing right now. And as you can see, it's uh, it's not crazy dynamic, but it still definitely does need a bit of compression. And it was decently recorded as well, but it still needs quite a bit of processing as we're going to see. Let me do a before and after for you. So this is how it is with no processing. You can almost say it's right. With processing. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. So yeah, that's where we're headed in this video. I'm gonna delete all my processing and start from scratch. So let me just quickly clarify the goals that I have for this vocal. First of all, I want to give it a squeeze to tighten up the dynamic range even more. I definitely want to brighten it up because it's a little bit dull right now. And it's going to need some space with some reverb and widening. Also, I recommend doing the vast majority of your vocal processing while listening to the vocal in context. In other words, not soloing the track too much. Basically, rule of thumb, I only pretty much use solo for the initial cleanup of the vocal, listening for subtle noise, clicks and pops, things like that. And then afterwards, Probably 90 to 95% of my processing I do in the context of the song, listening to the music, etc. Now that said, I also think it can be good to bring down the music by quite a bit. So I might bring down the entire music bus by 10 dB or so. This gets the vocal really on top of the mix, just temporarily, which gives you the benefits of really hearing it, like with the solo button, but without the drawback of losing the context of the song that, of course, the vocal needs to sit in. Also, I take a lot of ear breaks, which is something I won't be able to do in this video, but just know that is obviously a great thing to do, especially when mixing vocals, because they're super important. Okay, let's dive in. I'm going to go to plugins, fab filter, and start out with the Pro Q3. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is do some low end rumble cleanup. So I'm going to choose a 24 dB. And what I recommend doing here is slowly sweeping up. And basically, once things start to sound noticeably thin, that's where you back off a bit. So let's see how that works. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. You can almost say it's right. So about there is where I'm going to put it. As you can see, um, I have the 
pre and post on. So you can see how I am reducing some of this lower note. If you look at the light gray line, that is what tells you what's getting reduced. You can almost say it's right. So on the word right, I am kind of lowering that a bit, but that's okay. Overall, I don't think the vocal is getting thinned out here or anything. It's still maintaining a lot of integrity. So that's where I'm gonna set it for this particular vocal. Now, next up, I wanna show you something that's really sweet in Pro-Q3, which is Spectrum Grab. The way you make sure that's on is you go to pre-post down here and uh, make sure you have this button clicked so you can see the purple. And then what Spectrum Grab does is when you hover your mouse anywhere in the lower area of the EQ, it'll basically print the frequencies that you're hearing. This will allow you to see what frequencies might be poking out and be potential problems, and then you can fix them. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it You can almost say it's right Put me right back where you found it You can always say we try We try to understand Leave me there to compound it. So again, you're just looking for some of the obvious ones that are sticking out and that you might want to attenuate. And of course, always use your ears during this process. Super key. Now, one thing you might be wondering about is why I'm not working on this upper part. And uh, that is because I'm going to save that for some DSing. But in the meantime, let's move on to some compression with the Pro C2. I'm gonna leave the style as clean for now because I just wanna use this compressor as my peak chopper, meaning I just wanna tame some of the noticeable peaks that are popping through that need a tiny bit of compression. So I'm gonna set my knee to be quite a bit lower The attack is good, but the release could be a little bit faster. doesn't need to be too long. And now I'm just going to adjust the threshold until I get, you know, roughly 2-3 dB of compression in certain spots. That said, don't just blindly copy the fact that I'm going for 2-3 to three dB of compression. Every vocal is going to be a little bit different. You might only need 1 dB of compression at this stage, you might need a lot more. You might need 10 dB, depending on how it's recorded. Basically, always keep in mind that every vocal recording is unique. You can almost say it's right Put me right back where you found it can always say we try, we try to understand, leave me there to compound it. So right about there is good. I'm just getting a couple dB of compression on certain words, but it's not too intermittent. It's coming on pretty frequently. So yeah, this is giving it a nice squeeze, but nothing crazy yet. Okay, now this is where I usually would put a de -esser. This is an amazing de probably my favorite. What I always tell people about this is that it's kind of hard to make it sound bad. Um, but in any case, we're going to use this to clamp down on some of those harsh S sounds. Now, one tip I have for you is with male vocals, I often bring this down a little bit lower so that the compressor is listening to roughly 5K to 14K. Definitely play around with this depending on what vocal you are processing. And in terms of range, I always set it to about 12. I don't really want too much more than 12 dB. And now I'm just going to find a good threshold. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. 
can always say we try We try to understand Leave me there to compound it Yeah, that's sounding good. Let me play it for you in Bypass. You can almost say it's right can almost say it's right. Huge difference, right? Amazing de -esser. What more can I say? All right, but I think overall the vocal is still a little bit stuffy, so let me hit up another layer of EQ. You're probably noticing that I use a lot of layers of the same effect, and just as a general note, that's because I don't want any one plugin to be doing too much work. It just tends to work best that way in my experience. And that's because you'll get less artifacts from the processing. You can almost say it's right. Yeah, so the vocal is definitely still a little bit too stuffy. A uh, technique I like to use is a low shelf in cases like this around a thousand maybe down to 850 even you can almost say it's right you can almost say it's right put me right back where you found it can always say we try, we try to understand, leave me there to compound it. Yeah, that's definitely better, sounding a lot less stuffy and dull. Now let me introduce you here to a power technique, if you don't already know about it, called dynamic EQ. What dynamic EQ means is that you can set a given frequency with a node, like so, but when you make it dynamic, it'll only get brought down when a certain threshold is crossed. This is a perfect technique to use when you have a frequency issue, but it's intermittent, like it's not happening every single millisecond, but just here and there, you want a certain frequency to be brought down. So as you just saw, I made it dynamic, and now I'm gonna turn off auto down here so I can set the threshold myself. And then in here, I'll set the range to about negative four dB. If you watch this yellow line, you can see where the frequency is being brought down. You can almost say it's right. So it's not occurring on every word, right? You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. So if you're familiar with multiband compression, this is a very similar technique. But in general, this is just a lot more precise because you can then really get very, very surgical with super narrow cues, etc. So I wouldn't say the multiband compression is obsolete or anything, but more and more people are using dynamic EQs because they're just more accurate. All right, and I should also clarify that, yeah, indeed, I wanted to bring down this uh, area around 200 hertz, but I didn't want it to be too intrusive, so that's why I went with the dynamic EQ. Moving on, I think I can hear that it needs a little bit more compression still, so... I'm really excited to show you guys this, which is the vocal style within the Pro C2. This is a really cool trick to use on vocals, obviously, because you can add quite a bit of compression with this style without it being too noticeable. So when you put it on this vocal style, the ratio's off, the knee's off, look ahead's off. And I don't even really mess with the attack and release too much. They're usually pretty good. And then I'll shoot for quite a bit of gain reduction, like seven to 10 dB. Just like I said earlier, don't aim for seven to 10 dB just because I said so. Where your vocal is right now, you might need a lot more. You might need a lot less. 
Always trust your ears above everything. You can almost say it's right. Hey, I'm going to need some serious makeup gain. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. You can always say we try. We try to understand. Leave me there to compound it. Yeah, right about there is sounding pretty good. The point here is that with this vocal setting, it's just super smooth and you can really put the vocals like right up front in the mix with this. Definitely check this out. Okay, now I am hearing a couple more frequencies that are kind of annoying me. Usually at this point, I'll actually turn off the spectrum analyzer and just use my ears. You can almost say it's right. Can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. can always say we try, we try to understand, leave me there to compound it. So again, right here, I cleaned up some of the low end that I think was creeping back in with all the compression that we've added. And there were just a couple frequencies in here that were annoying me just a, a tiny bit. So I just brought those down a tad. And that's it for the initial stage of my vocal processing. Next, I'll move on to the sweetening stage. Okay, so I've gotten the vocal nice and EQ'd, de-essed, compressed. It's time to get into some slightly more fun stuff. So I'm gonna head to my isotope folder and check out some of the Ozone 9 modules. First thing I'm gonna reach for is the Exciter. I really like this module, and in particular, I love the sound of tape. I like to put this on mixes sometimes, but it can also sound fantastic on vocals when you just mix it in a tiny bit. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. You can always say we try. We try to understand. Yeah, I think I just really often reach for the exciter module and especially the tape to make sure that the vocals are gonna cut through the mix. Now, it's just important to not overdo this. I might even go a little bit lower, but yeah, the sound of this tape is just, I love it. Okay, now let's check out Ozone's Vintage EQ, which is sort of their take on a Pultec style. EQ, so it is just very smooth and you know, you can get away with some really big boosts and cuts here and it'll still sound pretty natural. One thing I probably want to do is a high pass here. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. can almost say it's right. And uh, I'm partially doing this because I know when I add the tape in, it usually uh, brings in a lot of extra gunk. You can almost say it's right. 
So that's about right. What I really love this plugin for is adding some air to vocals. Um, and usually I will boost around 8, 10, sometimes 12K. It really just depends. But if you want to give vocal that nice kind of airy quality, I highly recommend using this plugin. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. Me right back where you found it. You can always say we try, we try to understand. Leave me there to compound it. I think I'm gonna go with 10k in this case. Now, I also think I'm hearing an issue maybe around 3K. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. And always say we try, we try to understand. Leave me there to compound it. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. Can always say we try. Yeah, I think that's it right there. I got some air in there with the 10K, and then I brought down some of that harsh in your face frequency that's kind of can build up around 3K. Okay, now you might have been noticing that the vocals are very mono, and that can definitely be cool sometimes, but let's check out what the imager can do. This puppy is amazing for giving things just a tiny bit of width if you need them. So I'm gonna turn on Stereoize, and then this first mode gives you some Haas effect, which you could go read about in depth. Haas effect is a super deep topic, um, but we're not gonna use it that much in this case. We're just gonna turn it up a little bit actually not even that much, and it'll just give us a tiny bit of stereo width, but it's gonna make a huge difference. Check it out. You can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. That's way too much. Back where you found it, you can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it, you can almost say it's right. You can almost say it's right. This is definitely an artistic move right here. This is not like something you have to do, but this is definitely something that can really bring your vocals alive if they're sounding a little bit too boring, totally in mono. Okay, so we're nearing the end. I think I just wanna make sure that the dynamics are really in check, and I like to do that with the vintage limiter as the last thing in my chain. Not always, but I think in this case, just a tiny bit more compression is gonna be nice. I often will go with analog, but you can definitely play around with these modes. I'm gonna turn off this auto gain feature. 
And then I'm just gonna bring down the threshold so that just getting a, a couple dB of compression. You can almost say it's right. Put me right back where you found it. You can always say we try. We try to understand. Leave me there to compound it. Yes, that's about right. I'm going to now turn down the overall volume. Cool. And now the only final thing is a little bit of reverb. Now, this is not a third party plugin, but more and more the hybrid reverb is becoming a go to of mine because it just sounds really good. And I really like the plates in here for vocals. And um, yeah, these all sound really cool. And particularly what I like to do is use pre-delay and musical values. Because the pre-delay is gonna be very accurate, it kind of gives a little bit of a delay vibe to it. Something in between a reverb and a delay. Check it out, I think you'll know what I mean. Yeah, I would either go with either 1 16th or 2 16th and try to get that blend of a reverb effect, but also with that delay vibe. Okay, one final thing before I wrap up. I just noticed that with all the compression and limiting that I've added, there's one breath that has become very loud, and I think it deserves some addressing. Hey, we try, we try, hey, we try. Try to Did you hear it right there? Hey, we try. We try to so understand. this is a very common issue, actually. And the way I recommend treating it is super simple. Just zoom in if need be. Which Find out where it is. Command E to isolate it and create a new clip. And then you're just going to bring the volume down as necessary. You just want to reduce its intensity so that it's not as harsh, not as annoying, and just sounds better. We try, we try to. Hey, we try, we try to understand. Yeah, that's a lot better. Keep your ears open for this issue, as it's a very common problem when doing a lot of vocal processing. All right, so that's how I use FabFilter and Isotope plugins to process vocals. Hope you got a lot out of it, but let us know in the comments below what you think. Also, the plugins I used today are available over in the Warp Academy software store. So if you don't already have these plugins, you can head there to try them out or even purchase them. Also, while you're there, you can sign up for Warp Academy's free trial. This gives you access to lots of tutorials like the one you saw today, plus lots of other content like courses and live streams. Keep making awesome music and I will catch you guys on the flip side. Peace. <laughs>